Hi, this is Stu and we're here of course for Asana School at Purple Valley with Mark Roberts and Carolina, our beautiful demo girl. <laughs> and she's going to be struggling today, I'm afraid, after I've said that because we're doing Karan Devasana. And there's many challenges. The going up is of course one challenge. Uh, sorry, the coming down is one challenge. Uh, the going up is a completely different challenge altogether. So we've got Mark here, of course, that's going to talk us through it and may step in to save us <laughs> at any stage. So we're going to see what, how it's done first and Mark is going to talk us through it. How it is done. Okay. How, yeah. I'm trying to how do you're it. trying to do it. <laughs> yeah. So Caroline has got a variation that she uses where she uses a block. Um, this can help just to stabilize the hands and forearms and the shoulders. Uh, give her a little help to make it happen. Very important to get a good Padmasana here, which she's done. And as she exhales, she's keeping that stabilization through the shoulders. Very nice. Good. Okay. And come up. Good. Practice the jump back. Very good. <laughs> so. Um, there's a critical she point. She made it look easy. She did make it look easy. <laughs> yeah. There's a critical point, in, is there? Like, okay, to get into Padmasana, that's, you need to be open enough to get into it. Yeah, you and need to also have a very a solid pinch in Mayurasana. Before you start messing wobbly, with your legs. Yeah. Otherwise, as soon as you start yeah. moving your legs down, you, you can't. Yeah. Exactly. But once she's in Padmasana, yeah. what are the actions involved? Because if you just start thinking of your that your legs are going right. to land up on your arms. It yeah. all goes wrong, doesn't it? Yeah. So what can be useful is to take the left leg over yeah. like this, and then with the right foot kind of trace the leg and then until it comes into a half lotus. Yeah. Yeah, and then bend the left leg, try and find that right knee, and then either, you know, just kind of work it, work it in. Inside. And then you have to kind of like squeeze your legs in and out like this until you get the Padmasana nice and tight. Yes, and then yeah. you said that like so important because otherwise you've got no integrity on the... Yeah, that the squeezing nerve. in activates your core and makes everything come in. Whereas if your knees are out wide, it's very hard to get that core strength. Yeah. And then yeah. we could see when Carolina was coming down yeah. that she sort of folded her knees to her chest yeah. before she thought of bringing her bum down. Is that, is it like a stage like that? Yeah, so you come into the lotus and then tuck in, try and bring the knees really in close to the rib cage. So you're really compressing everything. And then from there, you have to shift the weight into the, bringing the knees into the arms. Right. Ideally in the top of the armpit. Okay. Yeah. Again, because the lower they're down. Yeah, just uh, it's just that it makes the posture more complete. Right. Yeah. So the higher up and much more likely to come back up again, I suppose, the higher they are in the armpits. It's it depends. Uh, it's, it makes it it's a harder variation when you get the knees right into the armpits and then come forward. It's harder to come up right. in a sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I can show you why. Yeah. After. And so yeah. then, then the the coming up, we saw you you assisted Carolina on the on the coming up. Yeah. Because that just seems like, for many people, it's defying just gravity. Exactly. Yeah. So what are the actions that are going through your mind to come up? First thing you've got to do is get that angry cat movement. Okay, so you've really got to just push through the elbows, through the forearm and get the shoulder coming away from the ears yeah. so that the upper back is going to lift up like that. Second action is your lumbar spine is going to do the opposite. So it's kind of like, you know, we have the cat-cow. Yes. So you've got angry cat and then the cat-cow like that. So when you're like that, so you're moving your spine from the angry 
cat position and then to this. To there. Yeah, so the and anterior tilt of the pelvis. Same as when you go into a headstand, there's a moment in the headstand where as you bring the hips over the, over the head, do you, can you do a headstand? I'll show you what I mean. Can you do, do a knees bent version? So just tuck your knees in. So say that's like the angry cat shape, yes. round like that. And then start to bring your legs up, up, up. And then at a certain point, the pelvis starts to go the other way. Here. Yes. In here. So it starts to arch and then straighten your legs. Coming up. And then comes back to neutral. to neutral. Yeah. Actually, with straight legs, it'll be more obvious. So come down to halfway. Yeah, there. It's more obvious there. Right. So see how much her hips had to shift yeah. this way to find the balance as a counterbalance. So the lumbar spine had to start arching in here. Yeah. Yeah. So then bring your knees all the way down. Bring the legs in and see then the lumbar starts to flex here. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then come down. Yeah. And so for those people that have got the coming down. Yeah. But now they're working on the going up. Yeah. What's the, what's, because you can be like in that position for many years, can't yeah. you? It seems to be. So what is the work that they can do to make that going back up more feasible? Uh, one thing is only come down as far as you can before you lose it. And then go back up. And then go back up. Okay. And just work on that, finding your, your edge and just train that and then you know try and over time go a little bit little bit further the other thing is having a teacher someone who can assist you and just the right amount so they're not doing all the work for yeah, you because that can happen sometimes yeah they're not well, pulling you, you up but they're actually just feeling <laughs> you you know and just just giving you a little bit of help yeah. and then you know over time you should be able to it's be come. less and less, exactly. It's going to come. I mean, you, you see some people kind of using their face a little bit yes. also. on the floor. Yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, if, that's, if you, that can get you up there, then that's, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do sometimes. Okay. Yeah. And could you show us the, the full coming down and going up going so up. we can get a feel of the actions that you were talking about? Yeah, I'll try. All right. This time, I, last video I pressed up, this time I'll jump up. Nice. Yeah. So I've got that arch first like the cow position then we go into an angry cat rounding bring the knees in and then here shoulders towards the hips head up breathing five times and then when i come up i'm going to just give one almighty push through my upper back to lift and then i have to use my lower back to pull up while well, I'm still pushing through the elbows. Cool, and there was our exit as well. And so I noticed there that you, on the coming up stage, yeah. you, you took your shoulders forwards, and then you didn't worry about bringing them back until you'd got your legs up to a certain height, and then you straightened the shoulders back. So yeah. That just allows you to play with your center of gravity, center of gravity more easily. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. was great. Cool. <laughs> Thanks very much. So this was uh, Karanda Vasana. So happy, have some fun working with that. Don't expect anything to change like overnight. <laughs> but um, if you keep with it, I understand that you can make your way back up again. <laughs> it's a journey that I am still taking myself. Good. Thank you.